gotta have him. I gotta, gotta have Jesus. I gotta the only real source of strength, yeah? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, yeah. Good morning to you wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Welcome to Good Morning Grenada for today, Wednesday. It's already the 10th day of April. Yeah. Something big is happening today. In the parish of St. David. Yeah. Six Senses Hotel officially opens today. Wow. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. St. David. Yeah. Your time has come. Nonetheless, folks, it's 25 minutes on to the uh, 7 o'clock, and it's time for us to get with the program. Don't forget this morning, uh, we'll be having uh, veteran journalist and uh, media personality uh, Hamlet Mark, he'll be in the studio with us this morning as we look at pertinent issues uh, in Grenada today. It would be a rather interesting t uh, conversation this morning. Yep, 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 yep. Well, it's time for us to have the Hills and Valleys Pharmacy uh, health tip for today. And um, I gave you two already for the week. Uh, this morning, we will be looking at uh, dealing with injuries. All right, injuries can happen no matter how careful you are. If you develop a workout injury, follow the RICE method to keep your injury from getting worse. RICE, that's R-I-C-E, it's an acronym. And what it means, R is for rest the injury. I, ice the injury to lessen swelling, bleeding, and inflammation. C, apply a compression bandage to minimize swelling. And E, elevate the injury, if possible, to reduce swelling. All right, so let me repeat that. Uh, dealing with injuries, that's our health tip for today, complements Hills and Valley Pharmacy. It says injuries can happen, no matter how careful you are. If you develop a workout injury, follow the RICE method to keep your injury from getting worse. R. Rest the injury. I. Ice the injury to lessen swelling, bleeding, or inflammation. C. Apply a compression bandage to minimize swelling. And E. Elevate the injury, if possible, to reduce further swelling. That is your Hills and Valley health tip for today. Nice. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all the wonderful people. Good morning to my brethren, Judge. What's up, Judge? How are you doing? You and the family? Huh? As my dad would say, the family. <laughs> morning, Joe. How are you doing, Miss Annie and everybody? Good morning to you folks. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. Yeah, Daniel and Curti and Micah and Alista and Ashlyn and everybody. Good morning. Delia and everybody. Good morning. Hope you all are doing fine. Good morning to the folks on the Sister Isles of Kariaku and Pidi Martinique. The Lesser Antilles. Good morning. Yep, yep, yep. Nice. The Grenadines, good morning to you. St. Vincent, Bakeway, Kanwan, all these places, good morning. Got a couple, uh, you know, uh, contributors to the program all the way from St. Vincent, man, and that's so appreciated. You know, Mary E. Banks, good morning. Yulin Alexander, uh, Michelle Bernard, Yolen Swan, hello and good morning. Blessings to you, Mr. Joseph, and to all your faithful and loyal listeners. Have a wonderful day. Yolen, give Bevin a hug and a kiss for me, all right? And tell Carl next door I say good morning. Catherine Phillips says, good morning, Grenada. Good morning, Innocent. Good morning, Catherine. How are you? Yulin says, good morning, Gordon. Good morning, everyone. Blessings for a wonderful Wednesday. Have a great, safe day ahead, everyone. Monica Mayrose Williams. Good morning, Mr. Joseph. Daddy Gordon was hoping to see you at the funeral last Monday. Hold on. Now, this one is... Mr. Kenneth Ned funeral took place already, right? My goodness. Oh 
my goodness. Daddy Godwin, sorry, I I did not. Oh my goodness. Okay, in any case, we'll make that up. Mildred Smith, good morning, Mr. Gordon, and to all platform lovers, have a blessed day, everyone. You too. Sylvina Charles, good morning, Innocent. All the best for an enjoyable day. Thank you, Sylvina. Have a great day. Wow, how could I be in a media house that does the obituaries every morning and evening and did not know? Wow. Okay. Early and all the way in the U.S., good morning, good morning, good morning, Nadisha, good morning. The Mac Mios, good morning, good morning to all you wonderful folks. I hope you all are doing fine. Yep, it's 20 minutes on to five, on to 7 o'clock. What's wrong with me? All right, and it's time for the word of the day today. And today we've got an adjective. That word is vicarious. Vicarious. Uh, V-I-C-A-R-I-O-U-S. Vicarious. Mm-hmm. A vicarious emotion or experience is one felt by watching hearing about or reading about someone else rather than doing something yourself. V-I-C-A-R-I-O-U-S, vicarious. It's an adjective. It describes. Nice. So here's how we can use that word. He felt a vicarious thrill as his daughter crossed the stage to accept her diploma. Yeah, I know that kind of feeling. Yep. Nice. Write it down, jot it down, learn to spell it, learn to pronounce it. Most importantly, learn how to use it in your writing and speech, okay? Good. Now, good morning to you, Nadisha, and the folks inside of Cafe and surrounding areas, Crochet, Pomrose, Latan, Mount Agnes, uh, Apritut, uh, Munich. Good morning to the folks inside of Munich, Petlin and family. Good morning. Good morning to the Maxwins, my family up there. Auntie Joan, good morning. Susan and everybody. Uncle Leonard, good morning to you. Um, yeah, Urban Mason and family. Branny, good morning. Good morning, Eric. Galba Mitchell, good morning to uh, Brooklyn. How are you doing, bro? Hope you all are the Macmillans. Good morning. The Marks, good morning. Um, saying good morning to the folks inside of Hope as well. Good morning to you, um, Teacher Rufin. How are you doing? You hear your partner calling and giving real trouble these days, right? It's time for the thought of the day. Good morning to um, Mr. Mike and Vernis. Isaac, good morning. I think I have the names right. Good morning to you. Don't turn off the TV. <laughs> we'll see you later, all right? Good. Now, it says here, when one, of, uh, when one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has been opened for us. That is so very true. Yeah, that is real true. When one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often, we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has been opened for us. Yeah. That's a great one. And Nadisha, I know you'd like this one. Nice. Good. So quickly, what's buzzing this morning? Of course, Maggie King of the Grill comes on on Saturday, May 4th at the Progress Park. A day of fun, food, and entertainment. It's going to be epic. It's going to be, oh my goodness. And to crown it up, there will be live entertainment from our local artists and so forth. There will also be the opportunity to win up to $5,000 in cash and prizes in a bingo. All right, nice. Good, good, good. What else is buzzing this morning? Um, so much, uh, so many different things are buzzing this morning. Uh, the new Cannabis Committee given six months mandate to steer the way forward for the industry. Now, I know this is going to have a lot of talk, eh? 
yeah they're really pushing forward with that you know there are some folks who are for it there are some who are against it but nonetheless in the region police recover cargo ship hijacked by haitian gangs yep it happened on saturday i hope you are and you know a, a news people you know keep Keep yourself abreast with what's happening in Grenada and the region and by extension the world at large, you know, because the world is now a global village and what happens over there affects us here. You understand? That thing where you say, when uh, the big country sneeze, we catch the flu, that the flying turkey said it in song. Well, it's, it's more uh, relevant now than ever. You know, what's happening in Gaza, whether we want to accept it or not, one way or the other, it will eventually affect us here. And I'm not just talking by the solidarity marches and so forth, but in terms of prices and all, in any case, let me not go there. Internationally, medical staff in Kenya continue their strike for a fourth week. And football lovers Madrid and Manchester City drew a six-goal Champions League thriller. Uh, three three goals aside. Hmm. I, I understand it was exciting. Yep, so those are the buzzing stories. As I said to you this morning, we will be having a, you know, the entire segment will be the conversation as we talk with uh, Mr. Hamlet Mack. We look forward to that conversation. It's 15 minutes on to 7 o'clock. Let me see who else is here. All right, Valerie Ferry. Good morning. How you do? A long time no see. Why are you cooking pea soup? Let me know, you know. Find them people nowadays, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't watch that. Cindy Welch says, Good morning. Big storm in Texas. Please pray for us. Cindy is here. Whoa, Cindy. Yeah, our prayers go out with you. Koala Sawyer's March. Good morning. Have a blessed day. Okay. Kim Fullerton, how you do? All right. How you do, Kim? Which one are your friends? Glyden? You say belated. Happy birthday to my friend. Duncan Sam, good morning to my mom, Jean, in Willis. Good morning. Happy uh, happy day to you, Miss Jean. Duncan wants you to have a good day. Kim, don't tell me you, beca- you behave like, you know, Ulrich and, you know, the other one, Michael, that came here and did not look up for their old friend, you know. Yeah, you don't practice that. I know we're tight than that. <laughs> Nonetheless, folks, it's uh, 13 minutes on to... Seven, it's time for us to do that break. We've got the AM edition of News Sports and the Weather. Stick and stay with us. We're with you anywhere and everywhere. But when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Thanks for joining us. Work was halted at two locations on Tuesday following the tragic death of Richard Fisher at the Molinier Land Slippage Project on Monday. Beverly Tellisford reports. The Gravel, Concrete and Emulsion Production Corporation was closed to the public on Tuesday following the untimely loss of one of its workers on Monday. The entire workplace was empty as colleagues mourned the loss of a dear friend who met his demise while on the job. This was also the scene at the Molinaire Land Slippage and Restoration Project on Tuesday following Monday's accident. Richard Fisher of River Road in St. George lost his life in a tragic accident right behind me 
on Monday evening. Rescue workers frantically tried to rescue 54-year-old Richard Fisher, who was trapped in a heavy-duty vehicle at the Molinaire Landslip Project area. However, all attempts failed, and Fisher was subsequently pronounced dead while still trapped in the vehicle. While Jubian was at the Korendorf scene, a former friend of Fisher stopped by to pay his respects. Well, I know him um, by coming and pour concrete for me. I'm a contractor. And um, when they come, they always greet you. They always, you're always nice with you. All of them are the same. You know, touch with them. I've know, known him for um, over 10 years. He wasn't that friend, but when they come on the site, it's just as if you, you know them from, you know, they move with you just as if it's an everyday thing. According to preliminary police investigations into the incident and resulting fatality, two trucks, one concrete and the other a pump, were operating alongside each other when the pump truck tilted over, colliding with the concrete truck and pinning the driver inside. The driver was subsequently pronounced dead at the scene by a medical doctor. An autopsy is scheduled to determine the actual cause of death. Investigations continue into this matter. The commissioner and members of the Royal Grenada Police Force have extended their condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Fisher. Reporting from Molinaire in St. George, I am Beverly Tellisford. Now, in a momentous occasion marked by community spirit and collaboration, the Victoria Park Pavilion Restoration Project reached a significant milestone with a ribbon-cutting ceremony that signaled the completion of the project. The restoration project, which revitalized the historic Victoria Park Pavilion, a beloved landmark in the heart of the town of Grenville, was made possible through the joint efforts of the National Lotteries Authority and the Ministry of Youth and Sports. The ceremony was attended by key stakeholders, including representatives from the NLA and the government. Nisha Peters tells us more. The ceremony served as a celebration of the successful completion of the project and a testament to the power of partnerships in uplifting local communities. During the ceremony, Cindy Henry, general manager of the NLA, expressed pride in the organization's sponsorship of the restoration initiative, highlighting the importance of preserving cultural heritage and recreational spaces for future generations. The general manager emphasized the NLA's commitment to supporting initiatives to promoting community development and well-being. This is not just my park, it is your park, it is our park. It is the hub for sporting and cultural and entertainment activities. It is the soon to be bought place once again for local, regional and international track and field record breakers and trend setters. As we entrust this facility to the care of our community through the ministry, we urge everyone to embrace its potential and their responsibility to care for, protect, and maintain its structure and promote an environment within this compound of security, safety, teamwork, and both mental and physical wellness. Henry highlighted the scope of work done on the restoration of Victoria Park Pavilion. The restoration activities included structural rehabilitation of the roof upstairs and downstairs, replacement of bathroom, toilet, and changing room facilities with the addition of lockers, restoration and addition of office area, talk shop, official studio, security booth, storerooms, replacement of all windows and all doors, repairs and installation of entry gates, construction of concrete walkway around the pavilion and with railings at the entrance, installation of chip stone and heightened retaining walls to prevent historic flooding, fencing of the entire field, rewiring, redoing the plumbing, rectifying sewer issue, tile work, painting, and other works. In her remarks, Delma Thomas, Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Northwest and Minister for Mental Health, underscored the significance of the pavilion as a hub of community activities and recreational events, expressing her gratitude to all those involved in making the project a reality. I want to commend 
the National Lottery Authority and the government of Grenada. I want to commend our former Minister of Sport, Youth and Sports, Minister, um, MP Ron Redhead, for the initiative, and also our present minister who saw the completion of this very important facility for us. And so this is one of the many projects as a government we will be rehabilitating. There will be new projects also because we believe that we have to provide an avenue for our young people across the country. So this is an Andrew. So I'm going to speak about St. Andrew. But as a government, we are looking at republishing and providing avenue across our trial and state of Grenada, Carrick, and PD Martinic because we believe in our young people. The ribbon cutting ceremony symbolizes a new chapter for the Victoria Park Pavilion, which will now serve as a vibrant gathering place for residents and visitors alike. Nisha Peters, GBN News. Other news, the backlog in the High Court has seen a significant decline over the past several years, marking a positive trend in the justice system. According to recent data provided by court officials, the backlog has steadily declined from April 2020 to April 2024. Nisha Paul has this report. In April 2020, the High Court faced a backlog of 179 matters, which increased to 204 in April 2021. However, the figures declined to 148 cases in April 2022 and a further drop to 115 matters in April 2023. Crown Counsel in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, Howard Pinnock, said the most recent figures for April 2024 reveal a remarkable decline to just 79 cases, representing a 90% decrease in the number of matters since 2019. In terms of the breakdown, 34 are cases of a sexual nature, 21 are homicides, and 13 are cases, non fatal, cases of non fatal offenses against the person, meaning the harm offenses, dangerous harm, may mean grievous harm. Um, of, the, of the 79 cases, what we, have, we are seeing is 42% are sexual, are sexual offenses. So that continues, of course, to be a concern. Of significance is the fact that April 2024 marks the lowest number of cases in the High Court since the the May assizes of 2012, where only 72 cases were reported. This means that the current backlog is at its lowest point in 12 years, showcasing a noteworthy achievement for the justice system. These statistics come at a time when there has been growing public concern regarding the efficiency of the judicial system. Despite the perception that the system may be faltering, the substantial reduction in backlog Backlog indicates progress in streamlining court proceedings and addressing pending cases. These statistics show that most allegations of offenses are alleged to have been committed by young men under the age of 35. Commenting on these statistics, Attorney Jerry Edwin used the opportunity to highlight the need to curb this concerning trend among the youth. Um. It's certainly not something that the law can address. Um, certainly the schools, the social affairs, the Ministry of Social Affairs, the probation department, and mommies and daddies have got to do a better job with their children because the boys overwhelmingly are ending up in the criminal courts, and that's something that we have to arrest as soon as possible. The decline in the backlog reflects the efforts of judicial officers, legal professionals, and other stakeholders in implementing measures to expedite court processes and ensure timely resolution of cases. It underscores a commitment to upholding the principles of justice and providing efficient access to legal recourse for all citizens. While challenging 
challenges may still exist within the judicial system, the recent data offers a glimmer of hope and serves as an encouraging sign of progress as the High Court continues its efforts to address pending cases and enhance its operational efficiency, stakeholders remain optimistic about the future trajectory of the justice system. For GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. Stakeholders in Grenada's legal system are receiving high praises following the significant reduction in the number of backlog cases, a development hailed as a major milestone for the country's judiciary. This accomplishment has garnered commendations from key figures within the legal fraternity, signaling progress in the administration of justice. Yeah, I was very happy when I saw the list this morning and saw that it was down to 79. And that was a lot of hard work. I know Mr. Edwin um, is a fixture before the court and sometimes doing two or three matters in one day. Now, Justice Guilford as well must be commended for our fortitude and hard work because as the lone judge sitting in the criminal jurisdiction for several months, Months, she would have impaneled juries in three matters at times and undertake three trials simultaneously in one day. So um, seeing that the, the, the matters now, the cause list is down to 79, I must commend the bench and the bar as well, because although, as I said, the, the members of the criminal bar are dwindling, but it is teamwork, and all the stakeholders, the bench, the bar, the police, the prison, social development, the probation officers, they all work hard to ensure that the list is down to 79. That was Francis Paul, president of the Grenada Bar Association, conveying his satisfaction with the recent developments. Echoing his sentiments was Crown Counsel in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, Howard Pinnock, as he reflected on the days when the court sat for only three sessions a year. It would have been the February, the May, and the October assizes, and we sat in all for nine months. In 2020, thereabouts, the Chief Justice changed that system, and so we have what is known as a continuous sitting of the High Court now, where we actually sit for 11 months, so we only get a summer vacation in August and of course the public holidays like in Easter so we are sitting now for 11 months and I, I can tell you it comes with tremendous tremendous sacrifices. Mr. Pinnock emphasized that continued collaboration and innovation will be essential in overcoming remaining challenges and ensuring the delivery of justice that is prompt equitable and responsive to the needs of Grenada. A lot of stakeholders work very very hard. Some, some faces are seen, some are unseen. So I really want to take this opportunity to thank, um, for example, the certainly the RGPF, uh, CID, the various investigative branches and all the officers concerned. I really also have to thank the Child Protection Authority because they liaise with and they work with these children victims and give us that support in court. And I think um, certainly of Mr. Julian from the Child Protection, who is the officer who is always in court with us. I also thank um, the probation department because they also have a very important role, Ms. Milo and her team from the probation department. I also thank um, defense counsel because we have no legal aid scheme in Grenada. So from time to time, we have been asking defense counsel to come forward and assist the young men, and they have been willing to do so. And I really want to commend particularly Justice Guilford. Maybe I'm biased, but I've been her prosecutor for just over 10 years. And her leadership is a very, very committed, hardworking, and fear person, and she has done tremendous. Um, she she has done tr a tremendous job. The tangible results of efforts to address the backlog of cases underscore the collective dedication to improving the accessibility and timeliness of justice 
costs for all citizens. The tangible results of efforts to address the backlog of cases underscore the collective dedication to improving the accessibility and timeliness of justice for all citizens. Moving forward, stakeholders remain optimistic about sustaining the momentum gained in reducing case backlog and further enhancing the performance of the judicial system. Justice Guilford, a national of Guyana, has been serving the court in its criminal jurisdiction since 2013 and is currently the longest serving judge on the island. She is now accompanied by Justice Sean Innocent, who joined the Grenada bench in January as a criminal judge. The other judges include Justice Ralston Glasgow and Madam Justice Agnes Acti, who has been serving in the civil jurisdiction of the court from 2017 and 2019, respectively. For GDN News, I'm Nisha Paul. Welcome back. Two men are in police custody, assisting with investigations into the discovery of a quantity of compressed cannabis said to be valued at more than $1 million. According to a press release issued by the Royal Grenada Police Force, the compressed cannabis was discovered by officers attached to the drug squad unit who intercepted a green Suzuki Escudo along the Latant Public Road and conducted a search. Police say the cannabis weighed 510 pounds and carries an estimated street value of $1,156,680. Police say the vehicle was impounded as investigations continue. Well, preparations for the upcoming 2024 season of the Grand Lake debates are already in full swing, less than four months after the conclusion of the 2023 season. In a bid to enhance the skills of participating debaters, Grand Lake organized a debating training camp in March. Described as interesting, interactive, and helpful by participating teams and their coaches, the camp attracted representation from 21 sectors secondary schools. The focus of the two-day event was on honing skills such as effective delivery, voice and body language, thorough research techniques and time management. Following the former change to impromptu debates in 2023 aimed at fostering critical thinking, communication skills and self-assurance among students, the training camp zeroed in on preparing students to excel in impromptu presentations. The 2024 edition of the Grand Lake Debates is scheduled to kick off in September. The explosive eruption of the La Soufre volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines three years ago. A reminder shared through the GBN ISOL lens. Our citizen journalist and I took us down memory lane with this photograph on the third anniversary of the eruption of the La Soufre volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. An explosive eruption occurred at 8.41 a.m. on the 9th of April 2021, with an ash plume reaching approximately 32,000 feet and drifting eastward towards the Atlantic Ocean. Approximately 16,000 people were told to evacuate the area surrounding the volcano. We thank our citizens and journalists for that submission. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. Are you a VIP? Have you taken the necessary steps to safeguard your child's health? Let's get it right. Get your child on their vaccination schedule. Our national protection and coverage is our national priority. Our actions will impact Grenada's health and wellness. Let's make childhood immunization and vaccination number one. I am Senator Jonathan Lacret, and I am a VIP champion. Let's make all our children VIPs, vaccinated, immunized, and protected. Let's all be VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan-American Health Organization. 
So party outings are outings that are caused by parties external to Grenling. Kite flying is one of the major causes of third party outings also. Kite flying over the years has proven to be an issue that has created many outages on our systems. This Easter, Grenleck would like you to keep your kite in sight. Use an open area with no overhead power lines. Avoid personal injury through electric shock. Avoid damaging property and causing inconvenience through power outages. Enjoy tradition safely. Avoid damage and injury. Grenlink, energizing our Grenada. From the fertile heart of Grenada to the far reaches of the globe, Ram's Supermarket brings together the best of both worlds. Savor the freshest locally sourced produce from our trusted Grenadian farmers and explore a curated selection of top quality international favorites. Experience a shopping journey where warmth meets a world of flavors and affordability meets premium quality. At Rams, we welcome everyone to discover the joy of global and local culinary delights. Nestled in Sugar Mill Grand Anse, we are open all week to offer you a taste of home and beyond. Rams Supermarket, where our family, community, and the world come together. We are the good food people. On Saturday, May 4th, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the big parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to $5,000 dollars cash and bingo interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register before march 31st it's the maggie king of the grill competition at progress park st andrew gates open from 12 noon bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details Mark your calendars, football fanatics. The GFA is turning 100 this year, and we're ready to celebrate. It's GFA's Legends Weekend, a three-day extravaganza, kicking off on Friday, May 3rd, and running all the way till Sunday, May 5th. Witness history in the making. The Caribbean taking on the world in a clash of legendary international footballers on Sunday, May 5th at the electrifying Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Get ready to roar with the crowd as iconic legends like Emmanuel Adebayo, El Hajj Diouf, Alex Song, Michael Essien, Luis El Matador Hernandez, Shaka Hislop, Asamoa Gayan, Ricardo Bibi Gardner, Russell Latapi, Shallery Joseph, Jason Roberts, Dexter Dabs, and a whole host of superstars light up the pitch. From breathtaking goals to unforgettable memories, GFA's Legends Weekend promises an epic celebration of football you won't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled on GFA's social media for the full squad reveal. GFA's Legend Weekend. Weekend. Be there.
Grenada for decades. We are the number one and largest electrical supplier. Hi, welcome to Sunny Electrical. How may I help? We offer electrical wiring accessories, tools, and appliances for all residential, commercial, and industrial applications, which is what we are known for. And we expanded our products with new innovative ways to modernize your home. New homeowners will be captivated in our lighting showrooms. Some of pendant lights here, these are very multifunctional because they can work for kitchens, living rooms, bedrooms. We have a wide selection of lighting, ranging from indoor to outdoor and solar. We are also available for site visit services to assist you with selecting the perfect light for your forever home. We are located at Dusty Highway in Grand Anne, St. George. Sudden Electrical, best value, expert advice, quality products. We hope to see you soon. Good morning, viewers and listeners. Welcome to the conversation this morning. As I told you uh, since yesterday, that uh, this morning our entire conversation will be with Mr. Hamlet Mark. Mr. Hamlet Mark is a name, is a household name for those of you who are into the media in Grenada, news or whatever. Um, he is a journalist by profession, a local, regional, internationally acclaimed journalist. He is a social and political commentator. And as well. Mr. Mark, good morning. Morning to you. How are you doing? Gordon, uh, yeah. Peter St. Joseph. Give you a full government name. Gordon Joseph. <laughs> and not many people know that name. Either. <laughs> yeah, there are some people who still think Innocent is, 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 is a real name. but that, That's in my name, we go way back. I know he's a little boy. So. <laughs> in the days of, of WFM, not WFM, YSFM. YSFM in Munich, yeah, where he's a Courtney. And, uh, where's Marvin? I haven't seen Marvin in Mama is there. He's, he's not doing well, huh? Yeah, I, the last time but I saw him. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so we didn't come to talk about this aspect of history this morning. Um, as, I, as I introduced you, you are a very prominent figure in journalism, not just in Grenada, but throughout. You know, you report on issues. Uh, one of the things I remember, I don't know if you would remember that, but um, it was, yeah, it would have been between 1992 Two and ninety four when they had we had we we did the Rabin report when Ichak Rabin w was just a snitch in, in Israel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so oh, you were there those days I had to carry the story when you called me in oh, okay yeah and I had to carry it live you know up in Munich but nonetheless um let's 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 start in a mild tone um let's let's look at Grenada we we have a new administration in office and. Um, we're not talking the politics yet. We'll get to the politics of it a little later in the program. But how is Grenada, in your opinion? Because um, one of the things that I know is that you travel throughout the region and uh, to some extent North America a lot. So you, you have a, a feel for what's happening on the ground. What, what's your feel? How, how is Grenada doing? I mean, okay, in, in context of the region, um, I mean, it's been a struggle for most of the islands. It's it's. I think a, a rough little period, I and mean, Grenada is, is not worse off. It's not, you know, I mean, they're hanging there in terms of the Eastern Caribbean and so on. Okay, so we're not doing too bad. I mean, it seems to always be better, obviously, yeah. but I mean, you know, in the context of everything else, no. I mean, okay. you know, there are challenges. I guess there will always be challenges, but. Um, the sky is not falling. I mean, for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's 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 a bit comforting. <laughs> that's a bit comforting. And um, <coughs> throughout the region, uh, one of the things that I've been doing is um, I I have friends in different territories. So, for example, I have Anton in Saint Vincent. I have Mikel in in Dominica. I have also um. Derek Abraham in St. Lucia, and I kind of get a feel for what's happening there. And the, the sentiments are similar, you know, because um, from a regional perspective, no one is really far ahead in, in, in terms from national performance. And when, so when you watch the various economic reports, it, it's, it's, it's to me interesting and striking how, how 
close everybody is in that sense, you know, yeah. and, and you know, facing the same challenges and you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. That's that's comforting news. Grenada is not doing too bad. As a matter of fact, we, and in some cases, some folks would tell. I, I was talking with a, a guy from, Dominica, I met him at Tropicana sometime two weeks ago, and he's saying. Dominica and Grenada has so many similarities, and even from a leadership perspective, the youthfulness. He said he remembered when Roosevelt uh, took up leadership; he was very young as well, maybe around the same age as, as our Prime Minister Dickens. Younger, even younger. He was thirty years. Thirty. Yeah. Yeah, and he just was a teacher. And yeah, yeah. And he was into his very first term, you know. Yeah. Two prime ministers died back to back, and yeah. you know. All right. Okay, but I, I want us to, time, when we have this kind of interviews, time flies quickly. So I want us to get into some deep stuff now. Um, you covered recently, you co- that there, there's been this, you know, high talk in Grenada uh, for, from the men from, from the cloth with uh, Father Gerard Paul and also um, Bishop Clyde Harvey. Uh, you followed that story. You, you did some some penning and some coverage of that story. What's your take on that whole fracker? <laughs> I mean, as a newsman, it's a, it's a fascinating and interesting story. Um, and I think the final chapter has not yet been written. I don't think it started yet. You know, and um, it. I, I mean, I was I was up at the church on Sunday. The thing about it, I was actually amazed how much support. The priest had among the congregation. I mean, almost everybody. When you say the priest, fa- um, Father Paul. Father Paul. I mean, there were tears. There were, I mean, genuine tears among children, old people. Um, I think um, he has a lot of support there. He has to be careful, though. Um, I mean, no, the, uh, everybody in some ways like a good rebel, but you, you can't push it too far. And mm-hmm. I think he, he runs the risk of. of of overreaching, of pushing it too far. Um, I think there'll be a, some kind of confrontation, well, confrontation in a small sea on Sunday. On, he, on Sunday coming? He's a damn he's going to he's going to go and preach again. <laughs> you know? Um, no, that's the fans. And I, I mean... I mean, I, I mean, I think the bishop will have to act further. I mean, there's, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, the Catholic Church is an organization, uh-huh. and there are certain res- responsibilities, and there are certain respect that you expect. I mean, you, I run an organization. I mean, you know, people can have strong opinions and strong views and things. Um, and the thing is, if 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 Father Paul is 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 so strong about the Catholic Church and the way it's run and so on. I, mean, I think at some point it's like it's like a marriage. If he does divorce, if it doesn't work, you'll have to divorce. Yeah, get yeah. divorced. Yeah, yeah. But um, the the grounds for for the contention, you know, the comments that he made as it relates to his uh, perception of the church uh, stands on the Israel Hamas war. What do you think? Do you think he's um, he's off the truth on that? No, I think he has a point. Um, you know, um, and not just on the Israel. <laughs> Well, I don't. I, I, you keep saying the Israel Hamas war, and I be careful, right? The Israel genocide the, in 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 Gaza. This is not. This is this is absolute genocide. Okay. And I think we we, we, we got to call it out for what it is. You know. Yeah. Um, what is interesting with that, you know, I, I follow the news and it seems as though Israel is falling out of grace with some of its big allies because even last night, uh, Joe Biden... But there are the hypocrisy there. I mean, the American <laughs> are the co-sponsors of that genocide. I mean, I, I, you know, make no apologies for saying that. I, yeah. You know, they, they do the political dance, you know, but they're still sending bombs to them and so on. They're still sending aid to them. They, they have tough talk, but nothing happens. Yeah. I guess that's just for the media. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, but in in essence, you you think that 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 whole saga with uh, Father Paul and uh, the the Catholic Church, it's 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 far from over. Well, there are a few more chapters to be written. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, um, Father Paul is not going away. It doesn't seem, um, and, and the church as an organization, um, obviously, will have to react to that. I mean, they just can't sit by. I mean, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's an organization, and yeah. there are certain 
um, yeah. rules and responsibilities there's certain respect you expect and demand yeah you know it's augurs well for for we media practitioners there's a nice story coming yeah. I mean <laughs> somebody called me on somebody goes to the church on Sunday afternoon and say what's the fascination you all have with this story I think it's a good story yeah I it mean, is. I mean it simp- is. simply it is. you know what I mean we, it, we, we'll be looking towards them for the so-called uh, should, I shouldn't use that that's somebody's phrase uh, but for the men of the cloth to see the way they will handle a conflict you know it could lead to certain changes in people's psyche here you know this is a serious issue but this is how we handle it maybe they'll just hug and pray together and you know. I mean the people that are diamond in unison literally I mean I spent some time even after the service and it showed the chaos there that they're not going to cooperate with any peace they send they're not going to attend any mass at any priest they send. They're not dealing with any other priest. Okay. I mean, it, it's you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens do, next. Do you think one of the scenarios could be a case where Father Paul just you know pull aside his supporters and start a, a new a new church or something? I mean, you know, never say never. I don't know. Um, you know, um, I mean, it depends where his, where his minds are at. You know. Um, yeah, I think he has to be careful, though. Um, you know, sometimes you start something and and it's fun and you know, it's interesting and and we all like a good rebel. Um, but there's a, a level you, you you have to stop and yeah. and, and reassess. And, yeah, you, you have to you have to know the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks. I'm speaking with Mr. Hamlet Mark and. Um, you know, I I think maybe only the unborn in Grenada that know don't know of Hamlet Mack. He's been in the media um, for eons of years. Uh, you know, started teaching and being pulled out of it to st- to start a, a newspaper. No, well, actually, um, I was I, uh, I was from school as journalist first, and then the then the the uh, invasion came. Okay, and I was in Germany at the time. And when I came back, I went back to the station, and you know, <laughs> Jerry, it's my good friend GDS was Jerry Woman. He said, "There's no job here for you." <laughs> ah. So I, I mean, I was doing some freelancing at the time for some um, international agencies, interpress service, and so on. And then I went to convent one day to drop something for Sister Gabriel because you know she's from Munich. Somebody, I can't remember who gave me something to drop for. And she said, you did history, right? So I said, yeah. She said, well, I'm looking for a history teacher because somebody's going to want to leave. Uh-huh. And so, and that's why I <laughs> started the next week at convent. <laughs> so, okay. so I started there and did a term and term, right? So then the summer came because the, the person would have been coming back at September from Martin to leave. And I was in Munich hanging out for the summer and Mr. Loftus Macken, who was the principal in Munich. Uh-huh. Said, you done with the convent? I, I said, yeah. He um, said, well, you had to come and teach by us. On, on, right? And then he put me in standard five, which which upset the, the, the teachers there, because I'm a young guy. Yeah. And yeah. he put me straight to teach common and trans Common and trans And that was yeah. unheard of, because young, the young teachers, you know, yeah, go to, like, the lower and the senior teachers questioned, queried that. <laughs> and and, um, mm-hmm. and then one day he came to me, teaching, and he said, um, George Rizan was the Minister of Education at the time. Uh, Mr. Rizan called, and he wants you to come to do, to run the party newspaper, the national. So I said, well, I assume that, um, well, okay, I'll give you some notice and when next month. He said, no, from from Monday. That was Friday, right? Uh-huh. So I said, but how that will, will, will be organized? Because, I mean, this day is Friday. He said, well, don't worry, he's the Minister of Education. Uh-huh. <laughs> he got to figure it out. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and, and that is where the journey started. Yeah, and then I was um, doing the paper f- for a while, maybe out a year, I think. And Mr. Leslie Pierce saw me just around in press, com- and he said, I-, "I like how you operate. I want you to work with me, hmm. right? And I want you to make you sub editor the Grenadian Voice." And I said, "Okay," because I wanted to be mainstream because national is a national is a party paper, uh, right. so I wanted to always go back mainstream. So I said, "Okay," and he said, "And you could start next week Monday." 
but I'm sending you away on a, on a three month seminar on Sunday. So the first three months, friends were coming in and boys was actually outside. outside at a at, at seminar. You know, that's, that's the faith he had in me from day one. Okay. Yeah. And after that, there was no turning back. Uh, well, I don't know about you. Yeah. Journalism is your thing? Always been. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I might have been five or six years. And I always said I wanted to be a journalist. And I remember my father, I, I, I said, you know, the, the, they kill journalists, you know. I say I know, I say I know but I don't care. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and I know, boy, you know. Okay. I always wanted to do that. I went in, in St. David's Secondary School. We started a school magazine. Okay, my that's where you went to school? Yeah. St. David's Sec. Yeah, okay. myself and Winston Blesdale, who's in St. Louis, you know. We started a school magazine <laughs> in St. David's, in St. Okay. David's School. Wow. All right. Um, as I said earlier, look at the time. It's already 29 minutes after 7 o'clock. Um, let's get into politics. Politics in Grenada, as a matter of fact. Um, you've been a associated with the National Democratic Congress for some time? I don't know. Well, I don't know what associated. I mean, I... Were you ever a member of the NDC? No. no. A registered member? No. I, 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 I don't do parties. I mean, I a few years ago, <laughs> might have been seven or eight years, somebody brought a party form for me. I said, what is that? I said, no, nah, I don't know parties. I don't know political parties. <laughs> okay. No, I, mean, I, I, I technically was, um, the only party I was a member of was the, the, the original New National Party, 84, okay. H84, 85, because we had this group in Munich, and I was, in fact, I was the youngest person in the group. I was technically not qualified, in a sense, to be a delegate because I was, a, I was one year too young. But okay. They, they insist I have to go to, the, to be a delegate. Okay. But that lasted one year, and I've never been a member of any political party since. Okay. Also, oh, you're just you're, you're just. Uh, what, how do you d d um, dub yourself? Because you've. Well, I I I mean, other than the, the, not I, just Grenada. I do I do um, campaigns. Right. I take off my hat sometimes, and I, I do campaigns. Um, throughout the region, um, local campaigns in North America, right? Um, I have done. I think it's. 25 elections in the region yeah in the region wow okay all right i want us to get to the meat now grenada politics as it is today all right um and we're talking active frontline politics not just the campaigns and so forth because as a matter of fact uh, just recently you have a you have a, an, a, an article out on the social media um, talking about the you know what's happening in the new national party and and so forth what's your take on what's happening what's happening in the NNP well we have an interesting junction and we in terms of Grenada and the local politics because um, of course the NMP lost the election to almost two years now. Um, most people say surprisingly, some people say not surprisingly, but you know. Um, to it, you, was it surprising? Because you were the head of the campaign? And no, I was not the head of the campaign. Okay. Uh, that, that was a myth. Um, okay. Maybe if I was, there might have been a different result. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it, was, it was possible. It was always possible. So it was not shocking. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think even down to the last, it was always 50-50. You know, some things I always thought it was always 50-50. You know? Um, I mean, remember that NMP has been there for a while. And there's a level of diminishing returns after two terms. Right? I would any, anyway in any politics, there's always some some fall off. So and then um, NDC, who has been struggling, then got in a, a new leader that was different, that was fresh, um, that gave the rank and file of the party hope, and the people who were in the middle who were looking for something different, something to hang on to. So so in in, in a way, in a way, it was the perfect storm. Um, it is uh, maybe having been around or covered or seen every election since the invasion. It it is maybe the worst one, it, maybe the worst campaign that NMP ever did. This this uh, last campaign. Yeah. And yeah. um, you know. why would you say that? What 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 was wrong and what was so different? 
I think the focus was different. I think there was a level of arrogance, a level of these guys can never beat us kind of thing. Um, would you would you say complacency to an extent? Well, arrogance maybe is what I want to use. Um, but you know, I've always had a view. You, you always show respect to politics. If you don't, you can come up to bite in the backside. You know, and I think there was not enough risk for the politics in that sense. You know, um, you know, without going to to too much details, but I, um, I think it was a missed opportunity for them, um, and I think that fuels that fuels um, Dr. Michel not wanting to go. <laughs> like how you, when you say, I, want, I, I, when I say wanting to go, go from, where? From wanting to leave leadership of, of his party because I think he he, he, he wants to have an ankle, you know. Do you think it's possible that he could have an ankle? Well, everything is possible in politics. Yeah, I've never said never. Um, is it difficult? Oh, yeah, very difficult. But it's possible. I mean, everything's possible. Having, having, you know, um, worked, as you said, you've done 25 elections, mm. and not just in Grenada. How many elections have you done in Grenada? Um, not just covering, but, you know, being integrally involved. Well, officially from, um, um, I've, I've, I've lost track. Okay. The, the, the 90s, the late 90s. Okay. All right. So what would you say was, yeah, we know that the NDC got a new leadership and uh, some young blood into the party, vibrant, uh, some say charismatic, uh, and, and so forth. But what do you think is the the core cause for NNP's loss? Because to, well, uh, there, there are two things, really. I mean, and the polling has shown that. Basically, I mean, there are other factors. I, I think the quality of the campaign it, it, it was a factor. But the two main things were the issue of the pensions and and the issue of Doc's leadership. That is the thing that brought okay. that, that made NDC um, competitive in that sense. I, I was having I was having. A I mean, I, I think... I think NMP more lost it than NDC won it. That's exactly what I was yeah. about to say. I was speaking, this gentleman I told you about from uh, from um, Dominica in our conversation, because he said it fo he followed the Grenadian politics a lot because he he sort of compares the, the two leadership. And he's saying that from what, you know, prominent figures in the political realm in Dominica is saying is that NDC did not so much win the election, NMP lost it. Uh, do you subscribe to that same ideology? Yeah, yeah, but a win is a win, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, I had a, 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 a friend of mine, a leader who I did a work with one time in a camp, and he said to me, um, an ugly win is better than a pretty loss. <laughs> we'll take the win, how it comes, you know? <laughs> and I don't remember that. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know? An ugly win is better than a pretty loss. Yeah. Now, um... Do you think that, given the, the 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 dynamics as they are at the moment, do you think there because Grenada is predominantly a two-party state at the moment? Yeah, you know the other parties are not, you know. Um, but do you think there there could be a reemergence of an NNP in in governance at the moment, given the? Well, it depends what 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 what, what they do with the party internally. I mean, everything is dependent on on other things, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I said to me, I've never think anything is impossible in politics. Right? Mm. I saw when um, John Compton came back in Saint Lucia because I was there at the time, and the, and the Saint Lucia Labour Party was strong, right? And I think everybody felt, and the polling showed that the uh, the Labour was going to win again. I know I I hung around a lot of people who are essentially labor, but said they will give John Compton a vote because they want a little opposition on. Because, right? And I remember the morning came and John Compton won the election and fellas who I know voted for the Lord, the old man win. We, yeah, they, we vo we they, they voted the opposition in. We didn't plan that, <laughs> right? They, they, and I keep telling you, it's a dangerous thing to sit and say, I want to vote, for an I want to, vote to have an opposition. Because, see, you don't know the numbers stock up, so you, we decide we're going to vote for that guy. Not because, because I want an opposition. But if a thousand people say that and come and do the same thing. Yeah. So 
I used to people literally like, say, boy, I'm not the only one with anything, you know. And I vote for the man, why do you want the man to be prime minister? <laughs> I had people say that, you know. <laughs> okay. You know? All right. Folks, it's 22 minutes on to uh, 8 o'clock. We take a commercial break, and we'll, when we come back, we get into, you know, uh, some more in-depth conversation as it relates to what's happening, um, especially with that op-ed you have in the, in, the, in the media now and what's happening in, in the NNP. You read it? Huh? You read it? Yeah, uh, you yeah. still read, man. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm a news freak. <laughs> Folks, you take that break. We'll be back after this. Don't you go anywhere. Are you looking for a reliable, affordable, and customer-friendly pharmacy? Look no further than Hills and Valley Pharmacy, the nation's leading healthcare products and services provider. We are committed to serving you at convenient locations. Find an extensive and affordable selection of prescription and over-the-counter drugs and medical supplies at Church Street, Hillsboro, Karakou, Jubilee Street, Grenville, St. Andrew, near the bus terminal, and Halifax and Grenville Street, St. George. Our committed team is always available to offer valuable assistance for managing your health and wellness. Discover the additional benefits of our wholesale distribution on Halifax Street and our Medgar Center on Grenville Street where we provide in-house physiotherapy, massage therapy, doctor consultations and eye care services. Our commitment is to satisfy all your healthcare needs including competitive prices, loyalty rewards and special discounts for seniors. Contact us at 435-6904 and WhatsApp 535-4734. Choose Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Remember, your health is our business. Whatever you've been putting off, do it today with a loan of up to $20,000 from Cross Ready Cash. No collateral needed, flexible payment terms, and fast approval. All you need is your ID, proof of address, job letter, pay slip, and two references. Visit your nearest Cross or Ready Cash location today or apply online at Cross.com. Why wait? Get it done today at Cross Ready Cash. We are ready when you are. Conditions apply. Conditions apply. Saturday, May 4th, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to $5,000 cash and bingo. Interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register before March 31st. It's the Maggie King of the Grill competition at Progress Park St. Andrew. Gates open from 12 noon. Bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details. Mark your calendars, football fanatics. The GFA is turning 100 this year, and we're ready to celebrate. It's GFA's Legends Weekend, a three-day extravaganza. Kicking off on Friday, May 3rd, and running all the way till Sunday, May 5th. Witness history in the making. The Caribbean taking on the world in a clash of legendary international footballers. On Sunday, May 5th, at the electrifying Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Get ready to roar with the crowd as iconic legends like Emmanuel Adebayo, El Hajj Diouf, Alex Song, Michael Essien, Luis El Matador Hernandez, Shaka Hislop, Asamoa Gayan, Ricardo Bibi Gardner, Russell Latapi, Shallery Joseph, Jason Roberts, Dexter Dabs, and a whole host of superstars light up the pitch. From breathtaking goals to unforgettable memories, GFA's Legends Weekend promises an epic celebration of football you won't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled on GFA's social media for the full squad reveal. GFA's Legend Weekend. Weekend. Be there. Whoa, whoa. Rock the box, we say, yeah. yeah. GBN, we say, arts and culture living, yeah. Rock the box, we say. 
by bus, jeep and boat, you will enjoy a front row seat to breathtaking Trinidad and Tobago attractions. Antigua's biggest resort definitely delivers the goods. Cricket, crop over, a busy sum of top events in Barbados is on the horizon. From panorama to parade of bands, this steel van is making an impact on all fronts. It's all next on this station. Welcome back, viewers and listeners, to the conversation talking with the uh, media mongol, Hamlet Mark. That's what you call me now? That's yeah. what. <laughs> <laughs> name is above my pay grade. No, no, no. Time is flying because we're having, you know, serious conversation. Um, let's get to, um, you know, the, the talk in the country today. Every nook and cranny that you go to, one of the things, especially, I mean, despite the fact that NNP lost the election, but they have quite a number of supporters still. People die hard NNPs. I mean, I mean, historically, NNP has a bigger base, so it, it starts in that sense with that advantage. Right. You know, uh, in 2008, when um, NDC won, it was almost like a broad coalition of of of. of people and organizations that really came together. I mean, you know, the NGOs and some of the church people. And we so. want change. Right? Yeah. Um, so so in that sense, uh, NDC has less margin for error, so to speak, statistically. Okay. You know, because traditionally, NNP has a bigger base. Right. You know? But one, one of the, the, the main conversations that people are having now is the... Um, what should I say, the inability or the lack or what? But the convention, people are talking about NNP's convention that seem to have not been happening for, what, the better part of two years. What's your take on that on that scenario? Well, um, in, in some ways, it's not surprising. It's it's shocking. It's illegal. I mean, I mean technically and theoretically, um, NNP has an unconstitutional um, executive. Unconstitutional I mean, executive yeah, at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, if somebody wanted to challenge them in court, I think they'll have a good case. I mean, you know, it's it. <laughs> because it, the convention it, it, should be here. It's almost, here? it's almost like a coup. It's like it's it, imagine, imagine, or oh, three years from now, right? The um, general election is due, and the government refused 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 to call it. But that is a coup. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, what I going to say, well, what, um, the, um, the constituency is not ready yet, the electoral commission don't have enough money, whatever excuse you know, mm -hmm. it's due, it's due. Right. <laughs> so what, what is, what in, from your knowledge, because, I, I mean, you're, you're, you're a connected man, you would have a lot of information. What, from your knowledge, what is the, the, the cause that's hindering the, 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 the convention? Um, Kit Mitchell's fear and paranoia, mm -hmm. and he's wanting. You're not. You're not giving him his title, the Honourable Kit Mitchell. No, I don't, I don't do honourables, you know. You don't do honourables. No, for nobody. Okay. I, I don't. I mean, I, I had a, a pool girlfriend tell me, you know, those guys so demand honour. You wonder if that's the first name. It's on the birth certificate. I don't do honourables. Okay. Not in my news. Not in, for nobody. Okay. Right. I, I, it, we, and we don't do Mister and so on your news. Okay. It's just we give you an official title. The Prime Minister. Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell. Or Dick Mitchell. Mitchell. Okay. And then after all, Mitchell. 
mm -hmm. or Prime Minister Mitchell or whatever. Okay. We, don't, we don't do analysis for it's for Parliament as far as I'm concerned. Okay. We don't do analysis with the new Mister because you see, and my our attitude is out Mister. It ends up being a judgment call, so we avoid that altogether. Because I show if a guy commits a crime, you don't call him Mister. So you bring a judgment to it. You yeah. just call him, you know. Yeah. Okay. So you leave that over. All right. You get untitled, and we don't do honorary, honorary doctor. We that we do doctor. If you yeah. own that, yeah, right. Okay. We, we can right. call it doctor. So leave that on the side. Eh? Yeah. We have bigger fish to fry at the yeah. moment. Yeah. The convention. Why isn't it being being called? Why is it there so different? Uh, so many different speculations of internal fighting as it relates to leadership. Uh, I, and I, just, and I, just, I think to to kind of fighting. I think it's 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 not a correct coinage. Okay. Um, the fight for democracy could be a messy thing. That's not fighting. That's that's a cause, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, NNP has traditionally been a, not, not the most democratic movement in the world. I mean, that's that's a historical fact, and it's even worse now. Um, and I, I I have a problem when people because people see any. Contest or any challenge or any move as as what confusion? It's not confusion. I don't accept that kind of. Okay. You know. Uh, How do you dub it then? How do you coin it? A struggle for 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 democracy. Okay. That's not confusion. That's an honorable and desirable thing. Do you do you think? That you see, uh, some of the some people show those those phrases are phrases wrong for a purpose. They want to put people on the back foot. Right? right? What is confusion is somebody hijacking the movement. What is confusion is somebody undermining the constitutional arrangement for an organization. That is confusion. Not people advocating for it to be imposed. Okay. That is noble. <laughs> okay. So, um, do you think that there will be a convention anytime soon? For this sake, I hope so. But I'm not putting my pot on fire, as they say in Munich, for it. But. I'd be surprised if there is one this year, but... Now, if there isn't one, if a convention isn't held this year, what happens to the party? Because that's, uh, isn't that unconstitutional of the, of, the, of the organization? For a long time. Every year? <laughs> and it's, uh, a few years now, it's been unconstitutional. So, why is that so? And why, um, what is the, the, the executive doing about it? Nothing. Why? If you know the answer, um, that's why I asked the question. You'll be a rich man. Well, I, I mean, I spoke in the, I wrote in the uh, blog yesterday about them suffering, them have battered woman syndrome. They know their end is not correct, mm -hmm. right? They grumble about it, and they, they do nothing about it. Okay. Um, to the detriment of, of, of the party, but that's the headache. Now, you know, we're not members, but, you know. It, 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 it is actually sad, though. It is actually sad. And I think um, Dr. Michel, every day, he wrote some of his legacy when he, when he gets on the way he gets on, and, and, and it, you know, he does what he's doing, or, or, or what he's not doing. That is allowing the convention to be to be called. I mean, I've heard him on the media, and I've heard um, my good friend Emlyn said that the convention has not been called because the executive has not been set has not set a date. That's not true, and they know that's not true because they don't want a date to be set. Why? That's the bottom question. Why don't they want a date to be set? Why don't they want a convention? Because he's busy trying to change delegates illegally. And, and so when he says that, uh, well, we can't, we can't call a convention until the, the party is organized. First of all, there is not a prerequisite for a convention. You say, it shall be a convention. They don't say when the party is organized, whatever that means. And when he, he talks about the party being organized, I mean, when I had time to change the delegates to mine like it. What changing the delegates does? It guarantees him to win again. So right now, he, he doesn't think he can win a convention if we existing delegates and he knows that i mean he might be a lot of things not a fool you know so in essence you're saying that if an uh, 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 a convention is held now with the current list of delegates it's very likely it's it's possible that um dr mitchell could lose the leadership of the party yeah 
and that will make it worse than the general election. But he, he, he puts at risk his own legacy. And it's kind of it's kind of sad. Actually sad for him, really. Um, because um, I mean, we've been in the trenches in a few instances, right? He's not, he's not a perfect guy. He's filled with contradictions. And he could be a little disingenuous sometimes, but he has a lot of talent and he's made contributions, right? Uh, but every day is he, ha he hangs on. He undermines the good parts of his legacy. Okay. There, 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 there are some schools of thought out there. One is that, and I'm saying it just the way people are saying it in, you know, in conversations, um, Kit should just hand the party to Peter. He can't do that. He, no. he, and he can't, hand it, he, he can't hand it to anybody. I mean, it's not some trinket you have that you can hand over to your son or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let democracy reign. <laughs> and and the, the leader might be somebody we don't even think about now, you know. Because uh -huh. the people, the people, the members will deal with that. And the, 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 the problem is not about personalities, and sometimes we make it about personalities. It's not about Keith Mitchell, it's not about Eminem Pierre, it's not about Peter David or whoever. It's about democratic principles. Right? You can't you can hand it over to Peter. You can't hand it over to Eminem. Or you shouldn't try. I mean, you know, I mean, he spent an whole, whole, uh, entire election talking about NEC parachuting people in. But they can won a convention. He tried to parachute people in. He tried to Akima. He hasn't worked. They didn't bite the, 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 the rotten apple. He tried it to Derek. He's trying to Dwight. Right? And now the latest flavor is, it seems to be a um, good friend. And it's not fair to Emily and Pierre because he's trying to tie her at his hip, which I think is great for her going forward. Right? Explain that. Tie her at his hip. Right? So she's coming across as, as uh, I mean, I don't think she's running for anything Un until, Kit, until Kit says she can. She's pushing and everything everything for deputy. So hopefully, in his theory, he wins that election and hands over to a midterm. Right? Because I, 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 I'm not sure yet. I mean, nothing is impossible in politics that if it's called today, she can win an election on a national level. I mean, a campaign will define all of that. But, you know, if, you know, everything being equal as it is today, I, I, I'm not sure that's possible. Do, in, 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 in that eventuality, do you think that Emlyn Pear can uh, successfully lead the NNP to... Uh, well, let us all put it that way. Emlyn and anybody else has a right to want to lead and has a right to run if they want to. And it shouldn't be dependent on Kit Mitchell. It shouldn't be when there is a vacancy. That, that's not politics of whatever that means. That's not politics of race. So if he never goes, there'll never be a democratic contest, right? Um, so, you know, she has a right to dream, and whoever else wants to. Once you're a member of the party, I think you're right. And this, this thing of people trying to say, well, he can't run or she can't run or he shouldn't run, I have a problem. I have a fundamental problem with that. You know that's his word, fundamental. Maybe we, 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 we hung out <laughs> for too long. <laughs> yes. But um, it's, it's rather interesting and exciting times because, um, you know, you'd find folks saying, well, the, the, the last election gone, he said that was his last. And Oh, uh, he had a few last, you know. <laughs> yeah. I lost, I've lost count of the last. Yeah. But... It is what, but and he also he also has a right to change his mind. I mean, he can say, listen, listen. I said I was going to change my mind. That's fine too, you know. I have, so, I have, I have, I have no problems with that. Scholar but, said he resigned, but he come back before. before. Right. <laughs> but I mean, much to do those things, let there be an, a, a genuine democratic open convention. And that seems to be and, the and, core and, of the and, problem and at the moment. If he wins again, fine. If Emily wins, fine. If Peter wins, if John Brown comes from university, some young guy or young woman comes and, and, and the campaign, fine. And I think then everybody rallies around whoever wins. But you see, um, it's unfortunate, but what, 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 what the commission is putting his party at risk of losing another election. I mean, I mean, 
And you still be fine with that. <laughs> I mean, if I am, I'm, I'm fine with what happening. Change nothing. Yeah. You know? As as we had, it's, you could imagine it's two minutes away from it. Yeah? Really? Yeah, it's two minutes away from it. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, from your experienced analysis, if by chance, as you rightfully say, and they see like what's happening, if the, the, the advisors and so forth says to Dickon Mitchell, listen, what's going on with NNP there? Let's call an early election. Well, I Do mean, you think NNP could be ready for that? Well, people, 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 people get, get ready when they have to. I mean, I always give the analogy of a, a young boy, um, let's say 16, 17 years in his house with his mother and father. Interesting, playing games and so on. And overnight, if his father dies, he becomes a man. The situation makes him get ready. Okay. It's just innocent. So, I mean, they, you know, that's how. Carnival is like carnival, you know. You always wonder if they're quite ready for it, but the juvie come, they'll be jab. <laughs> you, you, when the time comes up on you, you kind of get ready. You yeah. just happen. So, um, it's not easy to call an all election. I mean, I'll be careful. You can't be Patrick Manning and call one and lose. <laughs> that's criminal, but, you know, it's always possible. I mean, you know. Um, yeah. If I'm. If I'm Prime Minister Dixon Mitchell, I'll send Doc a champagne every month and tell him he's doing fine, stay where he is. We, we cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Hamlet, we've exhausted our time uh, this but morning. But there was some other, I mean, you, 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 got, you got to do an uncle sometime, man. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, I'm, I'm certain that, you know, you'd, you'd continue throwing out the the information and your, you know, your evaluation and, and so forth in the, in the press. But... It's a good conversation to have because it is a conversation that people want to 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 start, but for some reason they they're afraid to you know to to start it. But um, you're a brave man. And also remember, right? I mean, if it, when they were NDP or NDC or whatever, right? This bleeds back into the national politics. I mean, is this not some boys cut organizations in Davis? That has no consequence on. I mean, that will ultimately have a consequence on all or. Our lives, because they they'll want to run the country, yeah. right? And if they, if, if they didn't run the organization properly, how can they run the country properly? Good. Hamas, it's a pleasure talking to you, but we have to end it here, and um, we'll see how we can continue this conversation. I because I hope I haven't put you in trouble. Of course not. Well, uh, that's uh, I can, I can stop doing that to you, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I've been speaking with Hamlet Mack, uh, just sharing his insights on things that are happening nationally, regionally, and to some extent internationally. And um, that's the conversation this morning. Uh, thank you for being a part of it. We've got to join the BBC. Mm -hmm.